The United States of America. What comes to your mind when you hear those words? Would you think about those words being a blessing or would you think of those words being a curse? Right now, the United States is in a conflict of interests. We see people wanting to observe change while others want to obtain traditions. This has caused an uproar in our country. I want to discuss with you about how we should be grateful to live in this country, regardless of our disagreements. I was born just a little over a year after the attacks on September 11th. At that time, my parents talked to me about how our communities came together and supported one another since there was grief surrounding those whose relatives died in the Pentagon. My parents remember there being a spark of patriotism. Going into kindergarten, I remember my teacher teaching my friends and I how to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I remember listening to a friend's father discussing his experience in Iraq, in church, and how he applied the Bible to his deployment. I also remember listening to my dad discussing how a colleague of his at work had to have bodyguards in Shanghai, China, and how foreigners were treated in China. I asked my dad why he needed bodyguards and why people should just love one another instead of having mistrust. My dad said, son, there are countries in the world where there are no freedom. There are kids the same age as you. And while you are learning math, science, reading, and English, they are starving, uneducated, and in desperate need of adoption. I always have that thought in the back of my head, remembering how blessed I am to be an American. However, in the late 2010s and early 2020s, we have seen a decrease in respect for the flag. We have seen uproars in fighting against racism, progressing equal rights, protecting education, and combating gun violence domestically. It has gotten to the point where people just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. When I was in high school, I remember being one of the very few kids that would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone else that didn't, they were either too lazy to stand or they were protesting against the government. It is time now that we educate Gen Z into maintaining the proper standards of living in America and how we raise our future generations to believe in America. I understand that the United States had its moments in history where injustice, battle, and blasphemy carried our reputation as a nation. The thing is, is that we have learned from our past events. It is important that we understand our history so that these events will not happen again. On the flip side, we must carry out the objectives in how we look to our future. No matter how you vote or which party you affiliate yourself with, we must stay together in the drive to success in the United States. I want to give you a quote that gives me chills every time I say it. It relates to how we have come so far as a nation and preserving the foundation of our nation we so hope to maintain. The quote is as follows. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given us the freedom of speech. It is the soldier, not the campus organizer, who gives us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protester to burn the flag. Father Dennis Edward O'Brien, Sergeant, United States Marine Corps. Remember how blessed you are to live in this country, being able to attend college here at West Virginia University and the opportunities you are to be given after your time here.